Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new video and today we are going to be rebuilding Roma. Now, this is a team which I think is hard not to like because of Mourinho. He's pretty much the selling point of the club in my opinion and it's a team which you guys have wanted me to rebuild for some time. So we are going to be rebuilding them today. If you guys do enjoy these tactics slash sort of rebuild videos, be sure to leave a like on this video and do subscribe to the channel. And if you are wanting to support the channel even more, you can turn on notifications and this way you'll get notified when I upload, live stream or do a community post. But let's go ahead and try to attempt to rebuild Roma. So this is going to be Roma, a club that is quite stable to be honest with you. Our aim is to try and win the Champions League. Well, it is to win the Champions League. We will keep going, whether that take us two seasons, seven seasons, ten seasons. We will be rebuilding Roma until we have won the Champions League. And as you can see here, they've got some good reputation. They've got good training facilities, good youth and good youth recruitment. They have got some good players as well. In terms of the bank balance, there isn't a ton to work with in the first season. But I do, I do kind of remember just from playing with them alone, that there is a little bit of money to play with as you go on through the season. So we're going to kick things off by saying this. The first season is fairly limited. We've got 12.7 million and a lot of that is going to be probably converted into wage budget at some point to try and get some of these players to stay because there are some players that have got short contracts and whether they want to stay or not is a different matter. But this is going to be what we are going to be working with. And to do this rebuild, by the way, we are going to be using a completely incredible it's an incredible 4231 inspired by Ten Hag, which GYRFM did create. And trust me, it's a good one. So there will be a download link to that in the description and also to GYRFM's socials or Hood Gamers. Depends what channel it's on. But trust me, this tactic is an incredible one. But this is going to be the team we have got. And to be fair, there is talent all over the. I say talent. There's a lot of experience more than talent. Obviously, we've got Raul Patricio in goal, who will be needed to be replaced after a couple of seasons probably season because he, he's a good keeper but he's just obviously a little bit older we've got Spinozola, Selic and Vina on the left back positions in my opinion more than good enough for the first sort of two to three seasons if we go past that we might need to look to improve we then have Chris Smallen, Ibanez and Mancini again three very good centre backs whether Smallen will want to stay is a different matter but I'm going to try to get him to stay because his three and a half star ability is quite a good centre half and you know I'm a manager where I don't really want to sell anyone unless I physically need to. Right back, we've got Karstorp with Anselic. Obviously, Karstorp, not one of Mourinho's favourites in real life, but I am going to give him the chance to perform in this team and see how he does. We then have the two in midfield. We've got Pellegrini, Wijnaldum and Zanilio. Zanilio will definitely not be playing that deep. On the, also, on the right-hand side, again, the same players. In the sort of attacking or advanced playmaker role, this is where we've got some of the key players. You've got Dybala, you've got Zanilio, you've got Pellegrini. They're the sort of star players we're going to be building around. On the left-hand side, um, possibly, definitely, you'll definitely need some improvement as you've got Wijnaldum, who's not really comfortable, in my opinion, to play there. I wouldn't really like to play him there. And um, we might have to at some point. We've got El Shuari, who is getting on, and Zaleski, who, in my personal save, really did disappoint. But hopefully, he might actually turn up for this one. On the right hand side, we've got Zanilio and Dybala. So you are probably seeing a familiar pattern here. We are very short when it comes to rotation. Um, we've got players that can play in several positions. But obviously, they, we haven't got two of them. They have to play in one position, and we might be a little bit short-legged at some point. Going forwards, though, we have Tammy Abraham and Dybala. So again, good striking options, but as I keep saying, the same patterns do arrive. Now, this is missing some players because obviously in striker, we also have Balotti, um, who I actually am a big fan of in this game. So he will definitely be getting some game time. But overall, the two plays we are going to be building around is going to be Tammy Abraham, which I'm pretty sure you could guess because he's really good in this game, a great player in real life, and he is only 24. And the second player is going to be Dybala, slightly older. He is 28, but still got a few seasons in him. And I believe he's good enough to build sort of the, definitely that midfield around. This guy, I want him to have the freedom to sort of just roam, create chances and be a nuisance. And then we can focus on getting more defensive minded players to do the sort of nitty gritty work. And this guy here as well, Zanilio, a player who is quite hot and cold in my opinion on this game. Some saves you see him go to Man City and score 40 a season. Sometimes you see him just completely flop, but hopefully we can develop him into some player because the potential's there. And to be honest, he isn't that bad right from the rip anyway. But in terms of the transfers for the first season, as you can see, we've not actually signed anyone, but we did offload a couple of players in the likes of Trippi, 
um, both and a couple that, or oh, this guy actually went on the free and Shramadov, Shmod I believe is how you say that, to glad back for 1.1 million, who was a striker, which we didn't really need because we've got Bellotti, we've got Abraham, and in my opinion, that's more than enough. And this is going to be the team going into the first season. It is quite a strong team, in my opinion. Obviously, you've got Patricio, Karsdorp, Smolin, Ibanez, Spinazzola, Wijnaldum, Pellegrini, Zanilio, Dybala, El Shawari, Abraham. An okay bench, definitely room for improvement. Obviously, we are going to get the likes of Clivert back, um, Perez. These are some players which I might decide to sort of just move on, um, depending on, you know, how they have or their spell at their loan clubs, basically. But... Overall, it's a decent side. Obviously, Cristante, another good player, but there's definitely room for improvement in this side. So we're just going to see how things go in the first season. So let's get into it, and hopefully we can at least secure them top four places. So we've done a lot better than what I thought, to be fair, because we've actually managed to win the Serie A in the first season, which, again, I know Roma are a decent side in this division, but you do have the likes of Juventus, Inter Milan, AC Milan, Napoli. You know, you have got some really good sides in this. Even Atalanta, I see win it quite a bit in this game. We are also going to be the Italian Cup champions against Napoli, which again is a really big accomplishment, scoring 98 goals in the season and only conceding 36. Tommy Abraham scoring 46 goals, Dybala with 28 assists, but we are going to actually take a little bit more time and look into that now. So in terms of goals, this is filtered by goals, this one. 46 for Tammy Abraham, Dybala with 19, 12 for Zaleski, 12 for Bellotti, 17 appearances as a substitute, 11 coming in for Zanidio, Pellegrini with 8, Mancini with 8, um, Cristante with 6, 6 coming in from El Shawari. There is a little bit of a drop-off. In terms of assists, we're going to have 28 for Dybala, Pellegrini with 16, 11 for Zanilio, Karlsdorp with 9, 8 for Zaleski, Spinozola with 8. We've got Wijnaldum com coming in, sorry, with 8 as well. 7 for Selic, El Shawari coming in with El... El Shawari coming in with El Shawari, I was going to say. El Shawari coming in with 4, and then obviously it does drop off a little bit. And the thing which I'm now thinking is, after seeing these stats, obviously Wijnaldum here, he had an okay season, but I don't know if we're going to be able... I'm not going to be sure if we're going to actually sign him. That That is the only thing. I, I really rate Wijnaldum, but I just don't know. It depends who's on the market. That, that that's, that's the big thing. If we can get a player who I think is going to be better for the team and we can afford, I will look to sort of get someone a little bit younger. Obviously, if we can't, we're limited with options and we can get him, then that is definitely a player which I would like to bring in. And to do that, we have got £40 million to spend. Now, this is more than enough to actually have some fun with. You can easily sign a couple of players with this amount, and there might even be some players that we do have to sell. So we're going to get into this second transfer window now, and hopefully we can bring in some good players. Well, unfortunately, without me even realising, there was a lot of unhappy players at this club mid-season, um, I will say, and... One of them players who I was doing my best to try and keep is going to be Chris Smolin. I offered him a contract as we went into the first season. He rejected it and he's now gone on the free as of several other players as well, which is very annoying that they've been let go. Um, I'm not too bothered to be fair about all of them, apart from the likes of Chris Smolin and possibly El Shawari. They have all gone on the free, which is extremely annoying. The only positive is it did free up a little bit of wage budget and we have managed to bring in Fabio Vieira from Arsenal and also so Tete from Shakhtar for 11.7 million. Now, one thing I will say is that we have lost a ton of players. So this next season, it is going to be difficult. So we might have to dip in to the under 21s if we find ourselves struggling mid-season. This next season is purely about riding it out, trying to actually just, you know, it's going to be difficult. So now we've got the Champions League, obviously, as well. Um, and it is going to be a struggle. But I was not expecting all of these players to go at the same time. I offered pretty much all of them contracts and none of them accepted. So it's very annoying. And obviously we didn't even get money for him. But let's focus on the positives. The players we brought in, Fabio Vieira, obviously a very talented player um, in, in the Premier League for Arsenal. 23 years of age, fantastic attributes on him. Only, you know, in terms of value, he was quite expensive, but he is worth more than what we paid for him. So the end of the day, we didn't get ripped off, we didn't get scammed, and he can play in several positions on the field. He can play deep in midfield, he can play advanced midfield, he can play on the right. He helps us out a lot because, as I said before, we now need players that can cover several positions because we don't have a lot of players. So if a player gets injured on the right, we might need a midfield player that can play on the right to play on the right. And that's just how it's going to have to be. And the player to partner him is going to be Tete, who is just sort of a pure winger pure right-hand winger, so hopefully between him and Zanilio, 
they can lock, sort of lock that down and both of them don't get injured at the same time or abandon an injury and then we don't have to worry about that side of the field ever again because we've now got two really good wingers in this team Tete again a player who's only 23 years of age he has got decent potential obviously at the moment he's close to that potential but I'm more than happy with the attributes to be in the team for me he doesn't really need to improve this is by far a good standard of play for the Serie A and a player which I love to sign in many rebuilds and this is going to be the team going into the second season we're going to have Patricio, Karsdorp, Mancini, Ibanez, Spinozola, Vieira, Pellegrini, Zanilio, Dybala, Zaleski and Tammy Abraham. So as you can see, a couple of changes in there. You've got Vieira coming in, you've got Zaleski coming in, and also the bench now looks quite sparse. I mean, there's not loads of players at all, is there? I mean, very limited bench. So I'm going to dip into the under-21s, promote some of the better ones, because I think we're going to need them. And this season is purely about trying to ride out the storm, because next season, we just got to focus on bringing in as many players as we can, because... We need depth big time. Well, considering what I thought was going to happen, and that was going to be us possibly not even making top four, we have come out and won the Italian division, which is really good. Not the best display in the Cups. We did get to the final of the Super Cup, but in terms of Europa League, Champions League, it was a little bit of a flop, but I wasn't expecting too much from this season, purely because it was partly my fault. We didn't really managed to transfer as the best we could have done in this season a lot of players went out we could only afford to bring two in we possibly could have brought in three cheaper players but we went with two more expensive players and yeah at least we're managing to win the Serie A we've got Champions League again which was the main focus so the money should be good that we get to sort of strengthen this team with 133 goals scored only 48 conceded and in terms of the player stats in terms of goals you can see how small the squad is here by the way it's ridiculously small 52 goals from Tabby, Dybala with 25 16 for Tete Zanilio with 15 13 for Vieira Zaleski coming in with 13 sort of starting to develop into a little bit of a player now in terms of assists we've got 20 coming in for Dybala Pellegrini with 17 15 for Tete 12 for Zaleski Selic with 10 Zanilio with 10 Karsdorp with 9, 7-7 seven seven from Cristante and Abraham. Then there is a little bit of a drop-off. But overall, we are now seeing a little bit of a build-up in terms of the assisters. There's a lot of people getting involved. And also, in terms of the goals, you know, there's sort of quite a few players over to the 10 goal mark. And then you've got the star man, Tammy, who we are obviously building around, coming in with 52 goals. But the budget... £31 million. Now, it's not a lot of money, to be honest with you, but we've got to take into account that, obviously, we had a poor display in the Champions League, and a lot of this money is probably going to be coming from the fact that we got Champions League again, and obviously we did win the Serie A. So, we're going to have to focus on just trying to bring in as many players as we can. I possibly might even dip into the free agent market just to try and get some strength in this side, and I'll come back to you, because this is going to be a very busy window. We might have players that want to leave because we on very badly in the Champions League and the Europa League. So it's going to be a very challenging third transfer window. And yeah, let's see what we can do. So this is going to be the third transfer window, but I want to ask you a favor quickly, guys. If you are enjoying the video so far, be sure to leave a like on the video. Do comment below on what rebuild you want to see next and do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. But let's break down this transfer window. So as you can see, there's business in, business out. We've let go of a few players in the likes of Vina um, for 17.2 million, which by the way, is a very good price. A few more players went on the free. Real Patricio to Benfica for 1.4 million. And we have done a lot of business and a lot of free business as well. I'm um, very impressed with the business we've done, actually. We've spent a total of 57 million and got several players on the free. So we've got um, Antonio Blanco from Real Madrid on the free. We've got Callum hudson Adoy, a very exciting player from Chelsea on the free. We've got Antonio Severa from Alaves on the free to replace Patricio. We've got Lucas Hernandez from Bayern on the free. We've got Andres Schlauderup from obviously FC Norseland. But so you say that for 4.9 million. His contract was expiring. We've got Tobedo coming in from Nice for 40 million. We've got Lodi coming in from Atletico Madrid for 16 million. So we've replaced the players that went out and replaced them with better standard of players. The first player is going to be Blanco, and this guy will just help bolster midfield, whether that be rotation or eventually starting, but he's worth about £40 million, and we've got him on the free, so you can't really complain. Very balanced midfielder and a player that should get into this team. To partner that, we've got Callum, Callum sorry, hudson Adoy, obviously previously of Chelsea, Got him on the free, around a 50 to 60 million pound player. Fantastic attributes, apart from the finishing, which I will be trying to work on with him. But again, a very dangerous winger for this division. As you can see, already a leading Serie A player, and he could improve slightly even on top of that. 
We then go over to Antonio Severo. Now, this guy, to be honest, I needed a keeper, and it wasn't just because he was free. This guy's actually a really good keeper. Obviously, three and a half star ability, a little bit better than what Patricio was. Unlikely to improve, but for now, he is definitely more than good enough. We then have Lucas Hernandez. The only downside to this guy is he requires a lot of money per week, but his experience is played for some great clubs, obviously Bayern, Atletico, um, and he can play two positions, fullback and centre-back. His attributes are really, really good. Already a lead and Serie A player. Obviously, he's not going to improve too much on top of that because he is 28. So he is pretty much at his peak, but on the free, you can't really complain. Then go over to this guy, and I don't even really need to talk about this guy because everyone knows who he is. He's pretty much everyone's go-to signing on this game. And to be honest, he wasn't really a player which I was going to sign on this rebuild, but I saw him available for that price tag. Obviously, his contract was coming up, and I was like, do you know what? I'll offer a very cheap price, and they accepted. And he is going to be a player for the future. Obviously, he's not probably going to get into the team right from the bat because they filter by the best star ability. But in my opinion, for that price tag, 4.9 million was it? You can't really go wrong. We then go over and get to Bido. We needed a centre-back. We needed someone dominant. We needed someone experienced, obviously. He's played for quite a range of clubs already at the age of 24. Um, don't know why that is. He's obviously been hopping from club to club. But Tacklin, 16. Pace, 16. Reasonably tall. Already a lead in Serie A centre-half. And also close to his full potential in the sense that, obviously, he can get to the four-star. Um... Is there really a bad side to this guy? Not really. I mean, he'll instantly get into the team, probably partner alongside Ibanez, I imagine, and that'll be a very solid centre-back partnership. And we then finish it off with Lodi. And this guy, again, 26 years of age, obviously he can play as a winger. He definitely won't be playing as a winger in this team, but a very solid um, fullback, obviously played for quite a few clubs as well. The real stand-up one, obviously being Atletico Madrid, Nottingham Forest as well. But he is a very good left back in terms of attributes and by far good enough to get into this Roma side. And this is going to be the team going into the next season. We're going to have Severa, Karsdorp, Tobido, Ibanez, Lodi, Vieira, Pellegrini, Tete, Dybala, Zaleski and Tammy Abraham. And now the bench is looking really good. They're so much stronger. You've got Mancini, hudson Adoy, Zanilio, Selic, Cristante, Schroedrup, Hernandez, Blanco, Perez, Kambula, um, Justin Cliver, who again has got a chance to display some talent on that left-hand side. We've got a really, really strong squad now and very confident going into the next season. So let's get into the next season and see exactly how we do. So the next season has been completed. And again, we are now free for free, I believe, on Serie A titles. So that's always impressive. We managed to get to the semi-finals of the Champions League, which is definitely a significant improvement. The semi-finals of the Italian Cup and also won the Italian Super Cup, scoring 129 goals and only conceding 27. In terms of squad stats, we've got 57 goals from Tammy, 24 for Dybala, 14 for Zanidio, Zaleski with 13, 8 for Fer Eight for Hernandez, sorry. Eight for Tobedo. Tete coming in with eight. Six for Ibanez. The assisters of the team. We've got 24 for Dybala. Pellegrini with 15. 13 for Zaleski. 12 coming in for Vieira. Tete coming in with 11. 11 for Lodi. Six coming in for Karsdorp. Then a little bit of a drop off. So, in my opinion, I would like to see a little bit more goals coming in from different areas of the field. Um, because at the moment, it's going to be Tammy and Dybala sort of carrying the majority of the goal load and also the assistant from Dybala as well. And I would like a little bit more coming in from Zanidio and possibly Zaleski. Hopefully that will get delivered and we do see a little bit more of an impact from them players on the wide areas of the field. But if not, we are still winning stuff. But obviously, this is not going to finish until we win the Champions League. So we have still got some strengthening to do. That's exactly what we're going to be doing with this budget. It's 50, £51 million. Pounds. Now, this is quite a significant amount and it's probably because we've done very well in the Champions League. We won the Serie A and obviously the Italian Super Cup and we are starting, you know, racking up quite a few trophies now. We've got a very good side and we are going to have to be careful about picking players to go into this team now because we now run the risk of over signing players, if that makes sense. So you could easily go over, sign a ton of players and maybe just cause issues, to be honest with you. So the rule is we're either going to be signing people that can get into the first team or are significant wonder kids that have got a ton of potential because we only want players now that can strengthen the first team, really, because, you know, the team we've got at the moment is, is doing really well anyway. So this is going to be the fourth transfer window, I believe. 
And do you know what? It is really, really good what we've done here because we've, we've sold two players, both to Mines, by the way, who were aging, weren't too happy. Cristante for 34 million and Volar for 4 million. So 38 going out, 134 coming in. Obviously, a lot of that in installments. And we have gone, we've signed Raspadori from Napoli for 54, Bazunu from Southampton for 25 and a half. Zakarian from Moscow for 40 and also Hannibal for 45. And these players, I do believe, could be enough to push us to that to that final sort of area, whether that be a Champions League final or winning the Champions League. I can't tell yet whether this is going to be enough to win the Champions League, but I know just from the players we've signed, we definitely have a better chance. As now we have a fantastic backup striker slash first team. Probably a backup striker to start with, but it's just so good, this guy. And when I saw him available on the market, I had to get him. Obviously, 25 years of age, so he's not like a complete wonder kid, but great finishing, good pace, and he's already a leading Serie A striker. And the fact that we've now got Tammy and him gives me full confidence with the goals. We then have Bazanzu coming in, who's a, let's say a striker, a goalkeeper I've never signed before, I don't believe. Quote me if I'm wrong, but... A very, very good keeper, to be honest with you. Tons of potential. Already four-star ability. And I like signing players I, I don't traditionally sign. And when I saw him on the market, he was one of the goalkeepers that were sort of available and was better than what we had and also wanted to come. Obviously, he played for some, a wide variety of teams. Shamrock Rovers, Rochdale, City, Pompey, Southampton, and now he's coming to Roma. So he's been in England, so that sort of area, all of his life. And now he's coming to Italy. So hopefully he fits in well and hopefully he does well. We then have Zacharian, again, a very, very, very good attacker midfield player, 22 years of age, valued at around 70 to 77 million pounds. Good finishing, good bit of pace, good off the ball, good vision, good technique, a very tricky sort of attacker midfield player. And just because Dybala is getting a little bit older, this guy can step in and not put as much of a strain on Paolo Dybala. And then we have Hannibal. And this guy is absolutely incredible in this game, valued at around 60 to 70 million pounds. Very good attributes, very well rounded, 22 years of age. And again, just a player that is going to strengthen that midfield role, whether he fits in right away, is I'm not sure if he's going to get into the team right away. But I'll tell you one thing, he's definitely got the potential and he's definitely got the drive to fight for a first team spot. So a very, very good team on paper. I'm really excited to see what we can do in the next season. And hopefully we can bring the Champions League home. Home? Sounds a bit weird that, but we'll see what we can do. But let's get into the next season and see what we can do. So the last season has been completed and I say the last season because there is a little surprise for you guys. Now, if you have enjoyed the three builds so far, be sure to leave a like on the video and please do subscribe to the channel. We're absolutely killing it at the moment. We've just hit 5k. I looked about a minute ago. We're already on 5.2k. What is next? We're absolutely killing it. So any support is appreciated. But we have done the quadruple with this team. We've won the Champions League. We've won the Serie A. We've won the Italian Cup. And we've won the Super Cup. A very, very convincing, very convincing season. I'm very happy this has finally been completed because as much fun as it was, I was almost wondering how many seasons this possibly could take because we still had Karlsdorp at right back who was going to be the next player to be replaced. But overall, a very, very good season. As you can see there, we only got given, it was 15 million, actually a little bit more, 24 million because we did spend quite heavily last season, I imagine. But 116 goals scored, only 21 conceded. If we go into the squad, the goals, we're going to have 60 coming in from Tammy, 30 for Zachary, and what a season this was from him, by the way. 21 for Raspadori, 14 for hudson Adoy, 11 for Tobedo, 9 for Dybala, 8 for Tete, assists we've got 18 for Raspadori, 17 for Pellegrini, 17 for Karsdorp, which is ridiculous from right back, maybe we weren't going to replace him, 14 for Zacharian, Tammy with 13, 13 for Dybala, and 11 for hudson Adoy. So we have had a severe amount of success with this club. I mean, we have won five Serie A titles. We've won a couple of the Italian Super Cups, the Italian Cup as well, the Champions League, pretty much everything we possibly could win, we have won with this team. And we'll have a quick look at the data hub for this season. And it is really impressive. I mean, over three goals a game, 0.55 conceded per game, a real, real impressive season. And if we go into the tactics now, you can see what we've sort of left them with. We've left them with a very, very, very good side filled by best 11 this is going to be the finalized best 11 i don't agree with some of this so we are going to change it i would actually probably put Lodi there and i would definitely 
I know Raspadori's going there for that. I probably have an either Zaleski there. Or maybe it would be Raspadori. He is four star. Maybe it would be. Yeah, probably would be. But that is the team we're going to be leaving them with. A very, very successful season. Season, five seasons, that is going to be. Or four, was four or five? Four seasons. And we've left them with a very strong bench, obviously, for the future as well. And that leaves us with one last thing to do. And that is to break down this tactic. And we're going to clear this just so it makes the screen a little bit more easier to see. And there we go. So, again, big shout out to GYRFM for making this. I always love testing your tactics, buddy. And this one was very good. So, a positive mentality in possession. You want fairly wide, pass into space, shorter, a higher tempo, mixed crosses, work ball into the box, run at defense. In transition, you want counter press, counter, distribute to the fullbacks and the center backs, take short goal kicks. Out of possession, you want a higher defensive line, a high press line of engagement much more often, prevent your goalkeeper distribution and get stuck in. One thing I will say, you do pick up quite a few bookings with this tactic. So if you want to eliminate that factor of the game, it might eliminate some of the intensity, but you can feel free to take that get stuck in off on the players and also on the overall tactic. Now, the player roles. A sweeper keeper on attack, tackle harder, dribble more and take more risks. A wing back on attack on the right hand side, shoot less often, tackle harder, run wide with the ball, cross from byline and get further forwards. The left hand side is a fullback on attack, shoot less often, tackle harder, cross more often and get further forwards. Two ball playing defenders, both on defend, stay wider, tackle harder, take more risks and hold position. On the right hand side is exactly the same and that is the reason why they're on stay wider is because then fullbacks are going to go up and try and you know get involved in the attack etc etc so having them fullbacks sort of stay wider covers their areas of the field we then have a ball in the midfielder on the right hand side on support mark ties for and tackle harder a roman playmaker on the left hand side shoot less often tackle harder mark tighter take more risks and roam from position left hand side with an inside forward on attack dribble more cut inside with the ball take more risks cross less often and get further forwards on the right hand side we've got an inside forward on support tackle harder dribble more cut inside with the ball take more risks cross less often and get further forwards and in the central area we've got an advanced playmaker on attack tackle harder shoot less often dribble more and take more risks and to finish this amazing tactic off we do actually have a target forward player obviously this is now going to be the weg horse to the team on shoot less often hold up ball and dribble less for some reason you don't have a striker that can play this or you you haven't really got the tallest of strikers you can go and i would recommend having an advanced forward in my opinion but overall a very very good tactic an amazing rebuild a complete rebuild has been done and that is going to be it, guys. If you do want to download this tactic, it can be done in the description below. And yeah, if you guys have enjoyed this rebuild, be sure to leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.